We'll begin the service today. We'll sing number 141, Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. <laughs> Holding to his hand, and that is an unchanging hand. He's the same today as he was 2,000 years ago when Christ was here upon the earth. It's the same message, the same power, the same God, and the same Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we have the opportunity to know this morning. We have the opportunity to be a part of his kingdom here upon the earth. And I want us all to understand those things and to realize that that is something that we have to make that decision. It's to be a part of that. It will not be just put upon us unless we ask. But if we ask, he says, we shall receive. And I want us to all to listen carefully and to know and to search diligently and to take our own individual condition to the Lord and be sure that we have received that new birth that we have talked quite a bit about recently. But that is something that we must have. As he said, he told Nicodemus, 
We've got to have that new birth. Being born again with that new spirit. And I want us to remember what that spirit will do for us. But how it will take away the lust of the flesh. And how it will lead us in the right way. And how it will direct our thoughts and our words and our deeds. Whatever it might be, friends. That spirit will direct us right. It will never direct us in the wrong way and it will be there to lead us and guide us and direct us through all the trials and the temptations that are able to be brought upon us while we're here upon this earth and we can be victorious in the end isn't that a wonderful thing to think about that this is something that we can all win we think about these things quite often about the natural things and that some people might go out and they might start an endeavor or go into a certain type of business or whatever it might be. And they may be successful and they may be able to continue on that. Others may go out and to try to do the exact same thing and it be a failure. For some reason, some of the reason or way maybe that they did not manage it properly. But we all have the opportunity to be a winner here in this. But we've got to do the same thing that if we would go out into a natural part. Is that we've got to manage it properly. Starting out with accepting Jesus. Starting out with repentance of our sins and accepting him. And then asking him to be our savior. <laughs> And then he says, all that love me, keep my commandments. And you know, there's no way that we can enter into the kingdom of God without having that pure love, that charity. And if we have that, that will direct us into keeping his word, keeping his commandments. <coughs> and we'll be able to walk with him. It all works together, friends. And just as James has said, James wrote in his book that let our works show what our faith is. And we can read throughout the Bible and see how that the righteous, that was the way that they, their works were communicated to others. Their faith was communicated to others by their works. But it was not a work that they were doing themselves. It was a work of the spirit that was within them. It's what would be able to do that. And that is what will give us that same understanding and that same hope and faith and trust today. Is by being able to have the spirit of the Holy Ghost that will so strongly direct us in the right way. But friends, we have to accept him. We have to lay our, our will and our way aside. And become one with him, with Jesus Christ and our Lord. So let's all this morning ask him to come into our life and to show us what he'd have for us to do in our day here. What has he got for you and what does he have for me to do today? He didn't just put us here upon this earth to not walk with him. When we see that and we are walking with him, then there is a job for us to do to help others, to encourage others. First of all, to encourage each, our own individual self so that we can be walking right, we can be walking upright with him so that then that light will be able to shine and give others encouragement. And friends, I want to encourage you all this morning that you've got that opportunity, but we have to walk with him, and you, we all need to be extremely careful that we aren't being deceived in a way that he has warned us so much about. So let's be careful, and let's... Let that spirit discern the truths in us. 
And I know he can, and I know he will, if we will just allow it to be done. I have opened the Bible this morning to John, the Gospel of John, and this is the 14th chapter of John, something that's probably talked about. There's words in this chapter that people talk about and discuss and get a lot of encouragement out of, and I want us to be able to understand it as it should be understood so that we can be encouraged in it. Let's start reading here a few verses in the 13th chapter. We'll start reading at the 36th verse of the 13th chapter of John, the gospel according to John. The way that John saw what Jesus Christ did here upon the earth, the things that he heard, that he might be able to record them and write them down so that we can know the love of Christ had for him and that he has for all of other mankind mankind here upon the earth. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterward. Jesus, I believe, had just talked to him and told them some about the things that was about to happen in his life, how he was about to be crucified. And he just wanted them to understand. And, and John, John or Peter there had asked some questions. But the Lord said, whether I go now, it's not time for you, Peter. You can't come where I'm going. He was going back to the Father. But he says, you will be able to come at another time. You'll be able to follow me there, Peter. And I believe that there's an opportunity for all of us to be able to follow the footsteps of what Jesus did here upon the earth and then to go on into eternity to be with him there with God the Father. Just as he gave it and told Peter that he had that opportunity and he'd be able to do that, I believe that we have the same thing today. Peter said unto him, Lord, why cannot I follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Now Peter made some very strong and bold statements there. But the Lord understood all about what Peter would do. And he understood what was in Peter and how that he, the flesh was weak. But he told them in one point there that the flesh is weak. But the spirit is willing. And I know today that that flesh in each one of us, it is weak. We don't have power over sin without the spirit of God. We don't have power over Satan without that spirit of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said unto him, Wilt thou lay down my, thy life for my sake? He just asked him the question. He said, Peter, would you really do that? And that's the question that we should be asking ourselves today. Do we really love him as we should? Are we willing to lay down everything here in this life for him? For the love of Jesus Christ. Are we willing to teach and to preach salvation? And how, it, how we can have it here upon the earth. Are we willing to accept that? Or do we want to do something on our own? And to try to work out our salvation on our own. It is impossible. Will thou lay down thy life for my sake? He says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. Here was his friend. Peter had been with our Lord and Savior for many, many days there, for about three years, I believe, that they had been very close walking together, listening to the teachings being able to go out and to cast out devils in the name of God through Jesus Christ. Peter was involved in this type of work. He had a love for the Lord. But that flesh was weak. 
And I want you to look how that God had, or Jesus had such a love to Peter, and he was such a close friend to him. He just told him exactly what was about to happen. He says, I say unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me three times. <coughs> Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He just went right on into talking, and I believe he was discussing these things there with his disciples, his close friends, people that he felt like was walking upright, and they were. There was one there. If, if Judas was there, there was one that would, was not understanding that. And I believe that maybe he had already gone away from him when he was there. I know he had already in that 13th chapter, it talks about him giving him the sop and how that Satan entered into him. And I believe that he had gone on out. He was not there when Jesus was telling the rest of them about these things. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Now do we believe in him this morning? Truly believe in him. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Now remember, he was talking there to his disciples. He was talking to his followers, his closest friends. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. He was trying to encourage these people for, about, for what was about to happen here in their lives. They had walked with the Lord. They had seen his work. They were close friends. But all that was about to change, friends. They were about to see our Lord and Savior, their friend, arrested. They were about to see him go into a mock trial. They were about to see him there be chastised, beaten, whipped rebuked all of these things, they were about to witness this by wicked men that took him and crucified him. And as we go on and we think about what was about to take place and our Lord just trying to encourage them and after they'd done all that, then they hung him on that tree. They crucified him. But he wanted them to understand. He said, if I go and prepare a place for you, and he had already told them that. And I know that he, does, he is not a liar. He says, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there you may be also. And I believe that he will come again. And I believe that he will come and all of those, the righteous, will rise to meet him in the air. Those that are in the graves will come out. And those that are here upon the earth and are alive, alive spiritually, will be able to rise to meet him in the air where I am that you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Now, do, is that facts with us this morning? Do we understand that? That where Jesus went, when he said that he was going back to the right hand of the Father, do we understand where and why he did those things? And he says, you should know the way. 
And I agree that everybody here today should know the way to Jesus Christ. It has been taught. It has been preached to us. That's up to us whether or not we truly understand it. There was one here that we're about to read about that didn't understand about what was going on, but I believe he got the understanding. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. How can we know the way? We know today where he went. And we know the way if we truly want to. He says, I am the way, the truth, the life, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is only one God the Father. He is the only God of this universe. He is the God that created all things here upon this earth. He is the God that created man in his own image. He is the God that took a rib out of Adam and created woman, male and female, so that that could be his family unit here upon the earth, and there is no other substitute, there is no other way but that. And he says here, I am the way, the truth, and we have to believe upon Jesus Christ. We have to believe upon he, that he is the truth, and the life, and that no man can come unto the Father but through him, and by believing upon him, and by believing upon the word that is here in this book. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also, and from henceforth you know him and have seen him. And I know today, friends, if you have known him, truly known him, you know what the power of God is. What he has promised to us, that spirit of the Holy Ghost, that we can become a son of God, an heir of God. And when we are able to do that, we receive. What does the heir do? He receives all that whoever left it to him has. And that is what God is doing through Jesus Christ to us, giving us all that he has, all the power over Satan, all the knowledge that we need, all the understanding. He'll give it to us, and he'll give us all the love so that we can walk in his kingdom here upon the earth. If you had known me, he was letting Thomas understand some things and he was chastising him a little bit. You should have known my father also. And then he goes on and he clarifies those things. He says, and from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father and it sufficeth us. Are we, do we have an interest like these men did? Thomas there was wondering what the Lord was talking about. But I believe he had enough interest to want to know that he didn't just sit there and not ask any questions. He says, how can I do what you're saying, Lord? And that's what we need to be doing today, going to him and asking him, Lord, how can I follow you? What would you have for me to do today? Show it to me, Lord, what I must do. Then Philip there, he says, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. What do you want me to do? How can, give us this understanding so that our longing, our hope, our faith, all these things, we will have sufficient there to go on on our journey. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? And that could be said here with us today. Has his word been preached and taught to us so long? And do we not understand all about his work today? Listen carefully, friends. Pay attention to what he is saying. 
Our eternal life depends upon these things. That is why he was telling his disciples here, the apostles of Jesus Christ, that's why he was making this so plain and clear to them. He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest then, show us the Father. Do you not understand that, Philip? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. I and the Father are one. And we ought to understand that today, that if we have seen him and know him, Jesus Christ, that we see and know God the Father also, and we can know the power of God that is available to us all. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. And that's where I want us to all to understand, and I mentioned that in, our, in the part of the service, early part here today. And let's listen to this again, to that verse carefully. And ask the God to, to open your minds that you'll understand what he's saying. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Do we believe those things today? Now listen carefully. He says, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. He was walking in the spirit of the Holy Ghost. He was walking in the spirit of God. And he understood that those words, if he spoke anything that was good, he says, that's not my words. It's the words that the Father has given to me. And then he goes on and he clarifies something else. But he says, the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. And that's what kind of works that we'll have when we repent and when we have that spirit of the Holy Ghost. Then it's not our works. It is the works of the Father, the works of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost within us. And those works will be able, if we have the proper faith that what he, can, that what he has done for others, he'll be able to do for us. And then... Use that faith and do a work that will be able to show what that faith is. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me that the, for the very work's sake. He says, now, here I want you to look at the work. Look at what has taken place here upon the earth in me, in Jesus Christ, is what he's saying. And he says, now believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me because I've said these things, because I have told you these things. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. If you don't believe because I have said these things, he was telling Philip and, and Thomas and the others there. He says, look at the works that has been done. He says, I want you to believe. I want you to be strong. You're about to go into things here that is going to be different from what you've ever seen before. And I want you to understand this is what he was talking about. And I want you to be able to be strong in the faith and believe upon me, Jesus Christ, because I have said these things, I have talked to you, and that's what he is asking for us to do today, to believe upon him because he has given us his word. And then he he went on to talking to these people. They had been right there with him. They had followed him for three years. They had seen the marvelous works that had been done there. And he says, now, if, or either else, believe me for the very work's sake, for the sake of the works that you have seen me do here upon the earth. Believe me. Let that back up your faith. In what I am telling you, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Now I want you to think about this. 
Listen carefully to what our Lord said there. And I want you to let that, this word examine your works. Let the word examine, not me. I'm not judging you. I want the word to be able, the spirit of the Lord to be able to come into your heart and let it judge what your works are. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me believes on Jesus Christ, believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, believes that he can give us the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. He says, now he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. What kind of works are in you and what kind of works are in me today, friends? And I want to listen carefully to what he's saying. He says, I say unto you, he that believes on me, he that believes enough to have that spirit to receive that, what kind of works will he do? Our Lord says, the works that I do, and he did a perfect work here on the earth. Shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to my father. That we'll be able to accomplish all things spiritually here upon the earth. Because he has gone to his father. Because he laid down his life here on the earth. So that we might be able to have that spirit of the Holy Ghost. And he has gone now to the right hand of his Father. And he is there mediating between us and the Father. He is there to be able to give to all that ask, to all that seek the spirit that he's talking about so that we can overcome Satan in every instance, friends. There is, Satan cannot have power over the spirit of God, has never had it. And never will. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Whatsoever you ask in my name, now again, this is a promise from God through Jesus Christ. This is a promise that our Lord was talking to his disciples about. And that's who, he's, who we've got to be today. We've got to be one of his disciples, one of his believers, an ad adopted heir with Jesus Christ. Whosoever shall and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That's a strong statement. But that's coming from Jesus Christ. And I believe that he will do what he says. And the Father. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. That the power of God might be glorified in the Son of Jesus Christ. That what he has done, what God did for him... He says the same works that he was able to do in me by the Spirit there, I will give to you. Do you have that within you today? And that's where I need to be asking myself, do I have that Spirit within me? Do I know him? As he is talking about being able to know and understand him here. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it, he says. That's the promise again of what our Lord and Savior has promised. And that he will do. Sometimes we read through these things and we don't understand 
that, yes, this is the word of the Lord. This is the word of God. I believe that every word that is in here, if it's not red letters, it's still the inspired word of God that God gave the word to someone else that they might be able to record it, that we might listen to it, and that we might know how to live our life. But these words that we are writing, reading here are the red letter words, words that John said that Jesus Christ spoke here upon the earth. And I believe them. I believe the promises that are there. And I know that if we will walk with him, that we'll be able to understand that. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, when we go out and we hear throughout our country, I was talking to someone this week, and they were just relating to these things about what is taught in our country and throughout the world today of how that you don't have to live by that type, that standard. That all you have to do is believe. And it says that if you believe, you shall be saved. And he was very quick to tell me that, no, that you have to walk in his word just as much as you have to believe it. And this is a word that Jesus Christ spoke. He was the one that said this. If you love me, keep my commandments. And how can we have that love with him? We have to have the spirit of the Holy Ghost. Is the only way. And I will pray the Father. Now he tells about all these things. Listen to what he says. So that how that you can receive that spirit. Christ is just laying it out for us. If you love me, keep my commandments. Do the things that I've asked you to do. Live in accordance to my word. And he says, if you do these things, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. I want you to listen to that. Who would want to turn that down? Is there anybody here today that would want to turn down such an offer as that? Well, if you haven't committed to the Lord, you've turned it down. If you aren't walking in His Spirit today, you have turned it down. If I, have not, if I am not walking with it, I have turned Him down. But I believe that I have committed to those things, and I believe that I have been able to receive of that, and I know that you can too. I will pray the Father. Now listen, if, if you do these things, if you love Him, if you ask Him, if you go to Him and believe that He's the Son of God, He says, I will pray the Father to give to you another comforter. And what is that? That's that Spirit of the Holy Ghost. And what does it do for us? We receive it. And he says, I will pray to the Father that you're able to receive that and that he may abide with you forever, that that spirit might abide with you forever and you be able to come in where I am. To go to where the Lord went, to the right hand of the Father and to be there in his kingdom forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. And again, he's talking to the ray. He's talking to his, his closest friends, his followers there. And that's the same thing with us today. Even the spirit of truth was what will abide with you. Whom the world cannot receive. And those that have that worldly and that carnal mind cannot receive that. We've got to get that away. We've got to let him take that out of this tabernacle of clay. And to become a part of the truth. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. They did not see him. Why? Why? Because they did not ask. 
They ask amiss, as he talks about, as James talks about. They ask trying to consume it upon their own lust. And they did not know him. But he's telling me, to, then he just went wrote to his disciples to encourage them. He says, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be with you. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Isn't that wonderful to think about there? And that promise there, he was talking to his disciples. He's talking to us today. He says, I won't leave you comfortless if you walk in, if you do the things that I say. If you love me, if you keep my commandments, if you trust me, if you have faith in me, he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you in the form of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. It's all tied together, and isn't that a wonderful thing to think about? Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, ye shall see me. And we can see him today spiritually. We can be just as Stephen was when he was being stoned to death. He said, I see the Son of God standing at the right hand of, the, of, of his Father. He is there. He says, because I live, ye shall live also. Isn't that wonderful to think about? Because he lived, we can have eternal life also. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Tying together that connection with God the Father. <clears throat> he that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me, shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. I you to listen carefully in those words there. He says there, he that hath my commandments, he that knows his commandments, he that has them written in, his, in our heart, our spiritual heart, And keep them. Now we can't, again, we can't just say, well, I know, yep, I know all about <laughs> the commandments of God. I can spit off several of them. But just the things that he's talking about is not just going through the Ten Commandments. Those commandments is whatever he asks for us to do in our day. Whatever he tells you to do daily, hourly, whatever it might be, that's what he's asking for us to know and to keep. To just be walking with him in every situation and in everything that we do. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. We have them in our treasure, that spiritual treasure, and then we do them. It's what he's talking about. We keep them. He says, he it is that loveth me. Those that do those things, he says, that's the ones that has that true love for me. And he says, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Listen carefully. He that loves Jesus Christ has that true love, that charity. He says, he will be loved of my father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. I will love him and I will make myself known to him. I'll make my spirit known to him. I'll give him all the knowledge and understanding that he needs. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, 
How is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. And they wanted them all to understand these things. The question was asked to him. He says, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us? How will you show us, your followers, about you and not into the world? Why will they not understand? Why will they not be able to see it too? And this is where then he brings and he talks about the difference, some of the differences there between those that are spiritually alive and those that have that carnal mind of the world. He says there, brings it very plain and clear, if a man love me, he will keep my words. He will do what I ask him to do. And my father then will love me, love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So what, is, what, what does the righteous do? They walk in the word. They keep his commandments. They do not live out here in the things of the world, in the, the letting the things of the flesh just carry them to and fro and like a wave that the wind just carries to and fro and does not accomplish nothing. That is not what happens to them. They keep the word and they love him. And the father then, if they do the things that the father through Jesus commands to be done, he says the father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. We've got to hear that word. And we've got to walk in it. Now, I don't want people to misunderstand me. There is nothing of your good works that will save you. Nothing of my good works. We've got to have faith in Jesus Christ, full faith in him and the Father. But what he's saying here is that if we love him, it, that we've then we've got to walk in his commandments. We can't just say we love him and then just go about living a worldly life, worldly work here on the earth. He that loveth me not. Now then he goes and he talks about those with that carnal mind that loves the things of the world more than the things of, of God. He says, he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. They do not do the things that he asked for to be done here. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Now he's just telling, he says, now this is what my father sees. And he says that those that do not love me do not keep my word. And he says this is the words that God the Father is speaking. And God is the one that is telling these things, not man. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. And I know that his spirit is speaking these things to us today, right here, just as if he was present with us today, these words are spoken by, through Jesus Christ. It is his word, and I believe that he is just as much speaking it today as he did in that day. Now, are we going to believe it? Are we going to walk in it? Or are we going to say, this is just man's word and I don't have to listen. I can follow and do whatever I want to do. He says, he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And we better be careful that we are walking in his word. That we are walking in the commandments that he's asked for us to do. He's, we've been warned about... Be careful where you go. Be careful how you dress. Be careful what you say. Be careful in everything that you are 
it constantly setting an example to someone. Now, are we following his word? Or are we following the flesh? But the comforter, the comforter, he says, that he said that I will send to those that love me, those that keep my word. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That comforter, that spirit of the Holy Ghost, whom the Father, he says, will send to you through me, Jesus Christ, he shall teach you all things. How many times have we been told about that? To let that spirit just direct you. And that's what he's saying here, that that spirit there will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, we talk about that treasure of things new and old. Is that treasure of yours, that spiritual treasure, is it full of the word of God here today? And be able then that you can remember what he is asking to do. That you can remember, you can go back into that treasure and pull out the things that are good to carry you through the trials and temptations that you might have come upon you. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I go to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. If we have that true love for him, he says, you would rejoice because I said that. Because you'd know that I am going back to him to be able then to give to you the things that I have been talking to you about. And I believe that these things are available to us to all that want to hear it. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. These things have come to pass. Do ye believe on him today? Do you believe on him fully? I'm full of the spirit of the Holy Ghost. He says, do remember, he says, there is no other way but through me. He says, I am the way. But the world may know. I'm sorry, I skipped the verse. Here, hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. The prince of this world, the working of Satan, was about to take place there. And he was about to lay down his life just as his father would have it done so that we could be saved, that we could have eternal life. But that the world may know that I love the father and as the father gave me commandment, even so I do, arise, let us go hence. Arise, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Now listen carefully to what he is about to say, friends. He is the true vine, and his father is the husbandman. And I want you to think about what he's talking about there, a vine. Visualize a grapevine there. One there that... Is growing and it has life in it. And it has all the nutrients there that each branch that comes out from that vine will be able to bring forth fruit. Those that are alive on that vine will be able to bring forth fruit, good fruit. But I want you to listen here. And he says, now his father, God the father, is the husbandman. The one that takes care of the vine. We might call him a farmer today. Or, or someone who looks after a vineyard. 
He is the one that takes care of those vines so that they can produce and bring forth fruit. He says, I am the vine. Jesus Christ says, I am the vine, the one that is there to give to all of those that come to me, all of those that accepts me, that has been able to receive the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. He says, they have to come through me. And he says, now I'm that vine. And that Spirit of the Holy Ghost is there in that vine. And it can be given to the branches so that it can bring forth fruit. And he says, God is the one that's watching over all of that. And listen here what takes place. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it might bring forth more fruit. Now who's he talking about there? He says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Who is in him? Who is a part of Jesus Christ? That can only be those that has been able to receive that spirit there. They are a part of that vine then. But he says, he that does not bring forth fruit, fruit of righteousness, he that does not let that spirit grow strong and use the nutrients that comes out of that vine, that spiritual blessings, that spiritual knowledge, if we do not use that and bring forth fruit, righteous fruit in this body, he says, my father takes away those branches. Now again, these are words that Jesus Christ wrote. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it might bring forth more fruit. Every branch then, every one that is, has received of that, that then has that love and that they follow that love, and they let that love become stronger and stronger in them. And then they're able to perform the commandments that he asked for us to do and bring forth fruit. Spiritual fruit is what he's talking about. And he says everyone that does that, he will purge the sins away from them. Any mistakes that we make here in this life, he says he will purge that. God will so that then we might be able to bring forth more fruit, not be like that first group there that dries up on the vine. And he says when they are taken away, they wither and they're good for nothing but to be cast into the fire and be burned. I want to be a part of that vine and I want to be one that brings forth good fruit. Not one there that brings forth no fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now are we clean, are you clean, through the word that he spoke to us by accepting those words. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, Except it abide in the vine, no more can ye except ye abide in me. Abide, what does that mean? It means to continue in something. So what does he mean there? He says, now you've, you are part of me, you are part of that vine. He says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You are a part of it. And then he goes on and he says, now abide in me, continue in me, continue working, continue in faith. 
And he says, and I in you. If you abide in me, he says, I will abide in you. I'll continue in you. And then he goes on and he tells about what can happen. He says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, you cut that branch off and it will never bear any fruit. It cannot bear fruit unless it is connected to the vine. And that's what he's saying here. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, except it continues to be on that vine. He and then he makes it very plain and clear. No more can ye except ye abide in me. The only way that we can continue and be filled with that spirit and walk with him and let the branch bring forth good fruit is by abiding in the spirit of the Holy Ghost that comes through Jesus Christ. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. Now listen carefully. Are you a branch? The only way that we can be a branch is, number one, by being filled with that Spirit and walking with Him. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. And if we aren't in that vine, if we aren't connected to Jesus Christ, we can do nothing to save our soul. We can do nothing to good spiritually if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned destroyed because there is that branch is not good for anything it will never bring forth fruit if you abide in me, if you continue in me, keep that thought. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, if, they are, if you are filled with that, if you are filled with that spirit, is the way I look at that also. If you abide in him, if you're filled with him and my words abide in you, you're filled with his words and you want to continue in working and walking in that. You shall ask what you will. And it shall be done unto you. Hearing is my Father glorified. And I believe in that seventh verse. I believe he's talking about that spiritual part mainly. He said if you abide in me. And my words abide in you. You shall ask what you will. You shall ask the spiritual things that you need. And it shall be done unto you. And I know he will never leave you. He'll never forsake you long as we abide in him and it shall be done unto you again that's just the words that the Lord said that it would be done unto you and I believe him herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples he said if you abide in me and you bring forth that much fruit this will keep you as a disciple of mine. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. The Lord is so merciful to us. The grace of God being poured out for us. The power of God available to us. Herein is my Father glorified. His Father, the power of His Father glorified in us. That you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Is that what we're seeking after today? To be a disciple, an apostle of Jesus Christ, a follower of Him. I don't want you to say that, To, I don't even want people to say that, that you're a true light. I want you to say I'm a follower of Christ. I am a Christian. That's what I want to be known as, a Christian. Just as, so that I can be this. 
Herein is my Father glorified, and you bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. And that's what a Christian is. Those that are following Jesus Christ. A follower of him. If you keep my commandments... You shall abide in my love. If you keep my commandments. What's he saying? We've talked about this several times. He's saying, do the things I ask to be done. Live in accordance with my laws, with my commands. With what I tell you to do. Not what Satan. And let me tell you, Satan will deceive you. He is a wicked destructive being and he will destroy all of those that he can and who does he want to destroy he wants to destroy the righteous who does he want to get in there he wants to get right there beside the vine and be leading you away from the truth and then God come along and cut that vine, cut that branch off. How terrible that can be. When we've got the opportunity to abide in the vine. And I want us to know that. I want us to live by it. And I want you to keep, as he says, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. And if you keep his commandments, his love, will you'll abide, you'll continue in it. And what does he say? Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might be full, that your joy might be full. These things have I spoken unto you. I've just told you these things. I've encouraged you in these things, he says. That my joy might remain in you. That the joy, and we talked about that I believe last week maybe, that he went through the things with joy. Think about that. That he went through that crucifixion in his spirit with joy. Knowing that he was following his father. And knowing that he was establishing the law of grace knowing that he was establishing eternal life for all those that want it. And will we turn it down today? Will we reject his word? This is my, these things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You're my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Do you see anything here of what the Lord's talking to us about? Follow him, listen to his word, and walk with him. You're my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. I want us to turn over to Peter. I want to read just a few words there. This is in the second Peter. Let's start reading here at the 10th verse of the 3rd chapter in 2 Peter. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, into which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, 
What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Now he's talked to us and he's warned us about these things, of how we need to follow him and keep his commandments. And now he's talking about, he said, all of these things, seeing that all these worldly things and everything that's connected with the world shall be dissolved. He says, now we see and understand that. He says, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? What should be in our mind? What should be in our spirit? If we see and know these things. Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. And the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Nevertheless, according to his promise. Look for new heavens and a new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. And now here upon the earth, all of these things that we might see and it might look like that things are just crumbling around us. He says, look for that new promise. Look for the promises that we've read about today. Look for the new heavens and the new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. That's what we need to be a part of and to keep our minds involved in. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. How can we do that? He says, love me and abide in my word. Keep my sayings. Keep my word. And I will come unto you. You will be a part of the vine. I'm the vine. You'll be a branch. And my Father will bring forth good fruit in you. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you, these two men here at one together, Writing and teaching the same gospel. And I believe that we are getting the same messages today that they were able to go. And, Paul, and Peter there just encouraging people about what Paul had written to them about it. And how he had talked and preached to them. Also according to the wisdom given unto him. And that wisdom came from Jesus Christ. And he has written unto you he said that we might understand his word. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things which are, are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures to their own destruction. Listen at that. Now he was warning the people. He says, now, some of the things that Paul is writing about, it's hard to be understood. And it's, it's so hard that the, those without that spirit can never understand it. And that's what he's saying. He says, and which they are unlearned and unstable. They that are unlearned and unstable in the word. And how is that? That is those that is not walking and connected with the vine. As they do also the other scriptures. And we can see throughout our world today. How that scriptures are taken. And turned into a lie. So that they can justify their evil deeds. And that's what Peter was warning the people here about. As they do also the other scriptures. Unto their own destruction. And don't let Satan deceive you unto destruction, friends. Ye therefore, beloved. Now he's encouraging us in these words here. Ye therefore, beloved. Seeing that you know these things. And we ought to know them. We've read them today. They should be in our heart. You've got the opportunity to read and know. Beloved, seeing you know these things before. Beware lest you also being led away with the error of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness. Now listen to what he said. He says, brothers, you know these things. You should know them. Now he says, beware. 
Beware of of what Satan can do to you even though you are a branch there, he says. He says, beware lest ye also, lest these things happen to you also, be led away with the air of the wicked, being led away from the truth that you have acknowledged, the truth that you know, being led away with the air of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. He says, be strong and be steadfast in the truth. Hold on, continue in it. But grow in grace. He says, now, don't let these things here get you down. Don't let that, don't stumble into that. But then he tells us what to do. He says, but grow in grace. Stay connected to that vine. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that's available to all of those that ask. He says, James says that those that that lacks wisdom to ask. And God that giveth to all men liberally will give to you all that you need. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. I want all of us to remember that and Say amen if you believe it. And let's walk in it. These are the truths that he has. And we better listen. And we better be a part and be able to say amen to it. But grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's available. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen to that, friends. Let's walk with him. And let's move up. And let's be a part of that vine. Let's be a branch that is bringing forth fruit that will not be purged away. But it'll be purged. It won't be cut away but it'll be purged. And our sins that we do, our mistakes that we make, our Lord can purge them away, our Father can purge them away, and then we can stand strong, strong in the power of God, friends. I want you to know and understand that the power of God is available to each and every one today that will accept Him and follow the things that we've read today. Love him and keep his sayings and accept him. It's there and we can walk in it. But you've got to make that decision and then you've got to stay under that body and bring it under subjection as Paul said and as Peter said there. You've got to know these things and he says beware lest after you even know them that you'll be led away by the error of the wicked. I don't want that to happen. I don't want it to see happen to any one of us. But grow in grace, friends. Grow in grace in the power of God. And we'll sing today number 282, Where He Leads Me. And I want that to be, I want you to understand and sing that with the Spirit. Where He leads me, will you follow Him? And I know. He will not lead us but anywhere to the right way. That's number 282. And there may be someone that might would like to make a commitment to him. You can do so by coming forward as we sing where he leads me.
through Jesus Christ. We ask forgiveness for your sins. And it becomes your Where he leads me, I will follow. I believe that's what our message was today. Keep his commandments. Keep his sayings. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow me. Where he leads me, I will follow. I will go with him, with him, all the way. All the way through this life. And then through eternity with the love that he has to offer to us. Let us pray. To God the Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, we beg for guidance, Lord. We just beg for help from you. That you show us what we can do to encourage others, to help to promote your kingdom here upon the earth. Lord, we appreciate the opportunity of walking in your spirit. We appreciate the love that you and your son has for us. Help us to have that pure love and to be able to do the things you ask for us to do. Thank you for all you have done for us. Be with those that are struggling, Lord. Open their minds and let them see what you have for us to do. Is just accept you and lay aside our will and our way. And have full faith. And let that spirit then work in us. That your will be done. We ask in Jesus name. Amen.